Hello everyone, I am Teresa from Teresa's Spot for Art, where I love sharing off my heart and helping you create a little joy in your life through some fun, simple, and quick art projects. Welcome to the Gingerbread and Other Goodies creative collaboration for today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So we are going to get started. I am painting this cute little gingerbread guy for you. I'm going to turn my camera around. I have this um, very simple tracer of a gingerbread and this very well-worn piece of um, graphite paper. If you don't have graphite paper and you have a tracer, you can take a pencil and go around your entire design. It's all time consuming, but go around your entire design. And then when you flip it over and you press to trace, the pencil on the back of your paper will transfer to your canvas. But I'm gonna use my graphite paper. I want to thank Dawn, Annie, and Monica today for organizing this um, collaboration. Dawn from Shabby Meets Bling, Annie from Crafting with Indie Annie Jones, isn't that the cutest name? And Monica from Up All Night DIY. So, I eyeball. If you want to measure, you can measure, totally up to you, I just eyeball it. And if it's a sign that I'm making, and it's lettering, and it has to be right in the middle, that's different. But when I'm painting, I'm okay eyeballing it. And I'm just going to now come in here and trace in this little guy. Isn't he cute? So, I like using a tracer. I like using all the tools that are at my disposal so I can just sit down and have fun or relieve a little stress painting. This is supposed to be fun art, not fine art. And a tracer gives you a head start. It's just for placement. It's just for um, sizing. And it's okay to use one. I feel like anyway. I will say this. This is a note. For the eyes, the buttons, the little items, I just pretty much mark where they are. I don't trace them out the size that they are on the tracer. Because when you're doing little elements like this and you're trying to, you know, fix a button, especially when you're new, you're fixing a mouth, you're fixing the button, you're fixing an eye, they will grow because you're like, oh, I got to fix that. Oh, I got to fix that. And before you know it, your buttons are huge. So when I have elements like eyes, nose, buttons, little whatever, I will just place them. I will not. So I can see where they are. I put dots, but I do not trace them out the size that they are because I know if I need to fix them they are going to just grow it is just um it's just us you fix the right oh then you got to fix the left then you have to go back and fix the right and you're back and forth and back and forth so I have out my color palette here you can use whatever colors you want um I have out this really bright ultramarine blue some holly green yellow I think this is tomato red uh, burnt umber, raw sienna, black, white, and a little bit of fawn. But like I said, you can use whatever colors you choose to use. It's uh, your art. So if you follow me, I'm going to put this aside for a minute. If you follow me or you are part of my um, free group, Teresa's Spot for Step-by-Step -Step Acrylic Art on Facebook, I do one complete art class in there each month, and you get... Um, the tracer and the supply list and then we paint together at the end of the month on Facebook so I got him in here he's placed I'm gonna do a little bit of a line if I don't put a line for my snow I'll end up painting all the way down so this is just gonna give me an eye now where my snow starts and where my blue ends okay and I'm going to um, pick up my ultramarine and I'm just gonna start painting it in now we don't need full coverage in here because as I work my way down, I want to get lighter. Oh, there's something in that paint. As I work my way down, I want to get a little bit lighter. I'm going to start adding in some white. Plus, our canvas is white, and that's a color too, right? If we're going to be adding in white, what's the difference if we just leave some of our canvas with some streaks? And I don't want, I'm not, for a background, I'm not being particular. I'm not doing strokes, horizontal or vertical. I'm just kind of going in here messy. I want to outline his hat. 
so I don't start painting where I shouldn't be. It is okay if you get a little bit on your gingerbread. It's even okay if you wanted to paint your whole canvas, this background first, and then go trace in or chalk on your gingerbread after. That's totally up to you. You can do that. This is just um, my method and your method doesn't make it wrong. It just makes it different and that's okay. However, you can get started painting and feel successful and enjoy a little art time. That's what matters. That is what matters. So even like this pom-pom here, it's not perfect, but I'm gonna go back over that, so that's fine. So I'm just putting in my black and I'm just using like these rough crisscross strokes. So let me do his face here. And now I am gonna start adding in a little white. So I go into the corner or the edge of my white pile, puddle, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm just gonna start adding in a little white. Don't clean my brush. My brush is still dirty with the blue. And I'm working my way down and adding a little bit more white as I go. Well, let's get my snowy line here. If you want to paint your edges, you can. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I wait and I just do a fun edge. It's all different. There's no rules, it's art. Art can't be wrong. And then I'm gonna come back over here to this side. Again, go into the side of my white. I get, tend to go from the side of my puddle of paint. This way, if I need fresh white, it is available to me when I need it, because I can just then go to the other side with a clean brush. And I'm gonna work my way down again to this line, which is where our snow starts. He's holding this cute little candy cane. If you um, have not subscribed to my channel, please do. You can do that by hitting the red subscribe button below. I have over 400 videos and shorts on my YouTube channel for you to enjoy and paint or relax to or whatever it is. These days, there's so much negative going on. It's nice to have an outlet for art, and it's nice to be able to um, relax doing something else besides watching all the negativity on TV. So there we go. So I have that part of my background done. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I got a little white up there, but that doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm gonna wash my brush. I have my cup of water up here. I'm going to give it a nice squeeze on my rag. Then I'm just going to go back into my white and I'm going to paint my entire bottom white. Now some people say, the canvas is white, why would you paint it? Because paint has a different finish to it than canvas and I like my painting to look finished. So I will come in here and paint my all my bottom white. So I did not, and I don't know if you guys can see this. Maybe you can a little bit when I hold it up. So I cleaned my brush out and then went right into the white. I didn't clean my brush out like I would have if I was really, really caring. And so I have a little bit of blue coming out of my brush from doing the top. And it's just making the finest little hints of blue streaks in the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see. There you go, right there. And we like that, so I'm not gonna worry about that. Sometimes we want our snow to have a little bit of a glue, glue, a little bit of a blue tint to it, and that really makes it pop. So I'm not gonna worry about that. So I have in my entire background there, and I'm just gonna hit it real quick with the dryer. There we go. We wanna add some snowflakes to our background. And you can do that in two ways. You can paint them on with a liner brush or you can use a stencil. 
This is a Sleigh Ride and Hot Cocoa stencil that is very well used from um, Essential Stencil. And I just grabbed it and I'm gonna have a stencil brush here. And I'm just gonna pop in a few snowflakes around the background of my canvas. So I'm gonna lay down my stencil. I'm gonna come in here to my white paint with the stencil brush, but then I wanna pounce it off. The trick to stenciling is less paint. So you wanna put the paint on, then you wanna take the paint off, and then you wanna pounce on your design, but with light pressure. If you can avoid getting bleeds, that is the idea. I didn't even go back into the paint this time, I just went back to where I blotted it off. Sometimes I like to just use a portion of the stencil and have it hang off. And then we just have that little half a snowflake down there. I'm still not putting any more paint on my stencil brush. I'm just using what I have. And I'm just randomly putting these snowflakes on my canvas. Just giving my canvas a little bit more of an interesting background. Maybe now I will pick up a little bit more paint, tap it off, and then come back to my canvas. And I'm not using a lot of pressure, light pressure. We don't wanna push the paint underneath the stencil. We just wanna have it on our canvas. And I'll do one more over here, off to the side. Okay, so you can um, paint in your snowflakes with a liner brush if you want. You can use a stencil, you can skip them, whatever you wanna do. So now we have our background ready to go. Okay, I'm gonna take up a flat brush. This is about a half inch flat brush, I guess. And when I say half inch, I mean about half inch wide up here. I could get a ruler if I wanted to, but I'm pretty sure. Okay, and I am going to double load part in my dark brown and part in my raw sienna. And I'm gonna get my brush nice and filled up with some paint. You wanna apply a little bit of pressure to your brush. You wanna flare out those bristles. So you want the paint to be nice and up there in the bristles. Okay, I'm gonna come over to my snowman and with the dark uh, snowman to my gingerbread man to the dark to the outside I'm just gonna come in I'm gonna start painting in my gingerbread man pick up a little bit more dark paint and I want the dark to go to the outside I want him to be shaded on this side of his body so I'm gonna pick up both colors of paint every time. And I'm using my brush on the flat. Oh, messed up. I dipped in the wrong color. When you dip in the wrong color, you do not have to go back to the water just yet. You can just wipe it off and then start over. That's only surface paint. It doesn't get all up in there. So you don't really have to worry about it. If I went to my canvas and started mixing it in, that would be different. If you wanted to, you could paint your whole guy with the burnt sienna and then go back and add a little bit of shading with the burnt umber to the background. I feel like it's easier, it's quicker when you double load and then I'm just gonna fill them in in here. And you do your shading at the same time as you paint in your gingerbread guy. I might have to change my brush up here a little bit, we'll see. Get in his arm here, got his arm there, and then we're gonna do his face. So again, I'm double loading. I'm keeping the dark to the outside and I'm just gonna paint in his face. I know we traced on some elements 
but we're not gonna worry about that. Is it gingerbread? We'll be able to figure out where we need to put everything. His mouth and his eyes, and you can go back to your referral picture. All my kits come with a pre-traced canvas, all the paint you need, two brushes, step-by-step -step instructions, sometimes a video like this, depending on the design, and a reference image. So like if you're painting in your gingerbread's face and then you don't remember where the mouth and the eyes exactly go, you have your reference image, reference image to look back on. So there we go. So now I've base coated in, well not even base coated in, I did all the shading that I wanted to do all at once by double loading my brush and I've painted in my gingerbread guy. And I'm gonna wash my brush. Give it a nice tap off and then squeeze it. I like to squeeze it in the paper towel or the rag, whatever you're using. I don't want water to be up in here because if you get water stuck up in here in the metal part, the ferrule, you can turn your brush like this and then it runs out and that is hard to clean up on your artwork. You can fix paint. It's acrylic paint. You wait for it to dry. You can fix anything. But sometimes if you have a big splotch of water, it's a little harder to clean up. So now I'm just picking up a little bit of this blue and this white. I want it light. But I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put a little shade under him. I'm just going back and forth with the scrubbing motion with my brush, maybe like on a 45, like that. I have this light, light blue on the edge of my brush and I'm just scrubbing it in here back and forth just to have a little bit of his shadow and shading coming down onto the snow where he's standing. And then I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. This is another flat brush. I tend to use only flat brushes. I know a lot of artists use round brushes. Sometimes I use a round brush, but I mostly use different width flat brushes. And then I always use a liner brush. Okay. I'm going to go into my red. I have this little brush. Now this is about a quarter inch wide. And I am going to paint in the red elements. So I'm going to start with his hat. I tend to paint the way I color. And so for this hat, I went in with my brush on the chisel edge first and outlined. Then I came back in and filled it all in. Okay. I'm gonna take my brush on my chisel edge. I'm gonna come in here. You can use a liner brush for this, it's up to you and I'm gonna add his little mouth. Then I wanna come, and I can't see them now, but I can see where they are in my picture. I'm gonna use the back of my brush, and I'm going to give him one, two, three little buttons. Okay? And that is it for that little bit of red for now. Let me wash my brush. Then with the same black brush, I'm gonna get, I mean the same little brush, I'm gonna get some black and I'm gonna give him an eye. I want my eyes to be a little bit oval as opposed to round. So I'm going up and down this time with my brush instead of in a circular motion. And now we have our gingerbread eyes. To start, we have to add some detail to that. Next is time for our white, and I'm just gonna come in here. I'm gonna base coat in my candy cane. Now this is again why I said before, it doesn't matter if you get paint, if you got blue paint on your candy cane or brown paint on your candy cane, because when you come back in, that's why we paint things in a certain order. I can come back in here and just clean up anything that I may have gotten on him to begin with. So if I have a little blue paint, or I have a little bit of brown paint, I can just come in here with my white or whatever I'm painting next, 
and clean all that up. And let's get his pom-pom in there. Again, I could do the pom-pom with the back of the brush, but it's a little big for that. So I'm just using my brush on the flat, and first I lay it down and go one way, and then I lay it down and go the other way, and I get a pretty decent circle. This is making it look like a nose up here, and I, just, and I don't like it. So add a little bit of dark pink there. So I'm going to get some water. And I'm going to tap it off. And then I'm going to come back in with my raw sienna and fix it. Like I had a little bit of like a leftover from the shading or whatever. And it looked like, well, it was looking like a nose to me. So I wanted to even it out a little bit and fix that spot. So I will go over that again. It's a little wet right now. I'll go back over that again. Okay. So I'm going to come here to my fun green. This is Holly Green. And I'm going to paint in my bow tie. And again, you can do your bow tie any color you want. You can leave the bow tie off if you want. Totally up to you. It's all these details that you start adding, though, that really make your artwork be unique and come to life. So again, I had brown up in there, but I just came right in here and painted right over it and fixed it. So now I have my bow tie. We want to come, and now I'm going to use my green. I'm going to just paint these little... lacy snaky designs okay you can't see this one because he's holding the candy cane um put some stripes on my candy cane you want your stripes on your candy cane to go diagonal and you jump over that space it's like almost like it's still there and you do them on both sides and you want to make them as evenly spaced as you can. Okay. I'm going to wash my brush. Then I'm going to go back in with red, the same thing. When I use my liner brush, I like to twirl it between my thumb and my forefinger. You want to have a nice point on it. You want to use it almost like a pencil. The difference is with a liner brush, you always want to be going in one direction. You, it's difficult to change direction with a brush because the brush moves. It's not stiff. And so if you want to change directions, you will want to turn your canvas. So now I'm going to add a little bit of red to my candy cane. You don't have to put the green on your candy cane. You can just put red on your candy cane if you want. Up to you. And then again, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do a matching little lacy, snaky design on his two feet and his one arm. If you can't see the other one, I'm going to wash my brush. And I'm going to go into, I need a little bit more fresh white. So if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. I hope you're enjoying this collaborative with um, the Gingerbread and Other Goodies Creative Collaborative on YouTube. Thank you to Annie with Crafting with Indiana Jones and Monica for Up All Night DIY and Dawn from Shabby Meets Bling. This has been really fun. I'm honored to be a part of this collaborative. I hope you follow and subscribe to all our pages or all our YouTube channels here. Okay. So I have the little decoration done on his arm and his feet, his candy cane. Oh. And then, oops, oops, 
oops. I will write down my step-by-step -step directions. I'm gonna make this a little bit wider because if I forget something when I'm painting, it's okay. I can just go back and fix it, finish it, figure it out, whatever. But if I forget something while I'm painting with you guys, it's harder than for me to go back and fix it. So I, when I'm doing these videos, I like to keep on track with my list and my step-by-step. -step. Okay. So I'm going to add a little bit of white highlight to his smile. I'm going to use the back of my brush and I'm going to, oh, his, his eyes might be a little bit wet yet. I'm gonna wait on his eyes. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna add in the string of lights that he's holding. So I am just putting in this black line and you can do it however you want. And you can do as much as you want. Then I'm just gonna put these little nodes every so often. I'm just using my little flat part of my liner brush we want these to dry okay and wash my brush he's holding a string of lights there on his little gingerbread arm I'm gonna get some black here and I just want to outline his hat a little bit so we can really see it pop up in here. I'm using my liner brush for that. If you have difficulty with a liner brush and you want to wait until your art is completely dry and use a paint pen like a Posca pen, that is totally okay. You just want to make sure that your art is completely dry when you go back to it with a paint pen or you ruin your pen and they are not cheap. I'm going to do a little bit of outline on my gin on my uh, candy cane that my gingerbread's holding. If you come in here and you add these black lines and you think it's too much, you can go back to your white and soften them up with some white and it's okay if your black is still wet and it's getting a little gray the white still softens it up a little bit and I want to add a little bit of white highlight to my bow tie I want to add a little bit of white to each of his buttons and I do this just by making like a little bit of a comma stroke up there on each of his buttons. I'm still waiting for his eyes to dry. I'm going to come in here I'm going to mix a little bit of the fawn or if you want to use the burnt umber or the raw sienna you will not have a million colors out you can do that. You just like have to lighten it up with a little bit more white and I'm just going to add a little bit of highlight to this side. Not too much. Just a little bit with my liner brush. A little bit in here. Dry that off. Now I'm going to make our lights. So I'm just going to make our lights in various colors. 
I'm going to use my liner brush and I'm going to add a little bit of pressure and then lift. And add a little bit of pressure and lift. So this way our light bulb looks fatter where it attaches and then gets a little thinner as you lift up. Okay, and I'm gonna rinse my brush. I'm gonna do the same thing. I guess I'll grab some of this green and I'll add some green light bulbs. So I'm just gonna press down and lift up. Press down and lift up. Press down and lift up. And then we'll do one more here. Press down and lift up. Add a little bit of yellow. If you want those people who like white lights, you can do all your lights white too, even on your gingerbread art. And then last but not least, I'm gonna add a couple of dark blue. push and lift up. Okay. Now I'm going to go back into my white. I think my eyes will have to be dry enough. I'm going to pick up some white and I'm going to tap and tap. And then with a little bit of white, I'm going to just add a little bit of highlight here. And there we go. There's our gingerbread for our gingerbread and other goodies. YouTube collaboration. Isn't that cute? What a cute guy. I still have to fix his nose a little bit. I'm still not loving that. And it's okay. Like I said, acrylic paint, you can fix anything. Just have to get the right color combination going here. And you can fix it. I think I got it now. It was just looking too nosy, and then the nosy was in, it's looking like a nose, but then the nose is in the wrong spot, so I wasn't loving it. But there it is. And you can even do, I'm gonna show you a little trick here. You can even add some splatter paint if you want. Grab a brush. You need two brushes for this. I wanna make my white a little bit thin. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to it over here, just a tiny, tiny bit. We don't want it too thin, just a tiny, tiny bit of water. And we're going to do this on the side first before we go to our art. All right. So I've added a little bit of little tiny watered down paint to my brush. And I'm going to grab, I'm just going to grab a clean brush because it doesn't matter. And I'm going to take it. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do it over here. So it's not globby. And then I'm going to go to my painting. And do a little bit of splatter. And there we go. Just add a little bit more snow to our winter scene gingerbread. Put that there. Put that there. Put that there. So thank you again. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. And um, I have Teresa's spot for Step by Step Acrylic Art on Facebook where I do one complete art class um, once a month where you get a tracer and a supply list and a um, live video with me. Thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the gingerbread and other goodies collaboration and I hope to see you again. Thanks.